Hello, everyone. Thank you. As we're joining, we're just going to hold uh, a little bit while everyone is able to join the meeting. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll be starting shortly. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. I'm sorry for being a few minutes late. Alderman Moore, always a pleasure. Mayor, it's good to see you. Hello, Mayor Lightfoot. Hello, are we ready to, uh, to start, Patrick? Uh, shortly, we're waiting for some folks to join in on the other side and then uh, Gabriella will give us the green light to go in about 30 seconds. Okay, all right, I'm gonna multitask then. I'll be right back to you. Of course. Tori, thank you for changing your name. That would have been really awkward. <laughs> No worries. Hey, Alderman. Oh, okay. All right. Bye. Carlo, you may want to mute your phone. We heard your previous conversation. <clears throat> Gabby, I think we're good. We're good. We have enough people in the uh, yep. other side. I think we do. Thank you. How many do we have? Um, I think we're at 51 attendees right now. Um, I think it keeps going up, but. Okay. All right, well, it's 6.05. Let's go. Everybody okay with starting now? All right. Yep, take it away, Patrick. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the May 2021 Auburn Gresham Roundtable. Over the course of the last 12 months, since we started these community meetings last May, this is the 11th time the Department of Planning and Development has held this virtual meeting. Tonight, it is my pleasure to share with you that our mayor, the Honorable Lori mm -hmm. E. Lightfoot is Eight joining us tonight. 791. However, before we hear from the mayor, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Gabriella Jurisic. Gabriella is an assistant commissioner in our communications division, and she will go over the format for tonight's meeting and the rules of engagement. Gabriela? Thank you, Patrick. And thank you for everyone for joining us um, for this Auburn Gresham Community Roundtable. Uh, my name is Gabriela Jurisic. I'm the Assistant Commissioner of Community and Digital Engagement with the Department of Planning and Development. Um, tonight, Patrick and I will be uh, running the webinar and um, we will be monitoring the webinar's chat and Q&A box. So if you have a question for this evening's panel, please click the Q&A box and write in your question and we'll do the best um, to answer it. We've already received a number of questions in advance, uh, in advance for this webinar, um, which thank you very much for those of you who've done that. Um, and so we will prioritize those first during this discussion and then move on to things that we receive online. Um, if you did not get a chance to reply uh, to, or send us a question earlier, you can always email dpd at cityofchicago.org with any questions or comments, and we will do the best to uh, get back to you. Um, so I would like you just to note that this is a recording right now, so we'll make this recording uh, available on chicago.gov slash Auburn Gresham after uh, this webinar ends. Um, so I would like to now introduce the 17th Ward Alderman, David Moore, to begin tonight's conversation. Thank you so much. Uh to uh, Commissioner Cox and his um, entire team, to our um, Mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who's on this call, and to my colleague, um, who definitely would get an opportunity um, to chime in as well, the Honorable um, Howard Brookins. Um, we're here um, to discuss, first of all, let me say, uh, even before I was alderman, uh, there wasn't anybody talking about 
investing in, in Southwest or who, what I would use to say um, a Marshall plan in terms of development for the South and West sides of Chicago. Um, I was happy to um, support our current mayor and still support above her because of her um, vision to invest in the South and West sides of Chicago. Um, as we've just, um, discussed before, um, this um, Invest Southwest along the um, Auburn Gresham corridor, which encompasses um, several wards, um, Auburn Gresham, including um, 6, um, 17, 18, and 21. Um, as we develop these vacant lots to make Auburn Gresham pride, I'm, I'm happy that um, we were able to get we were able to get and the mayor was able to put out a, um, a RFP. Um, within that RFP, and we've talked about this before, we got one proposal um, back. Several other communities got more than one proposal, like four or five. Uh, we got one proposal back. Had we not gotten one proposal back, we wouldn't have been able to submit anything to the community. Um, when we got that proposal back, once we got that proposal, the next step was to bring that proposal to the community. And as we talked about um, within a meeting that I called with my 17th Ward residents um, after a, a contentious um, Zoom call, after people received um, fake um, information on their cars, we talked about that and told you all nothing was final, that this was a proposal that we were presenting um, to the community so that they can chime in. Yay, nay, um, let's make it this, Let's do something else or what? And so that's what we want to do. We want to hear from you. Um, you're going to hear from that from the mayor. So you want this to be a productive meeting. I, we've, I've heard from everyone. I'm sure Howard, uh, Alderman Howard Brookings got some calls and of concerns as well in terms of what people thought was happening. Um, but again, anytime we do a project, we bring it to the community uh, for their input. And this is your night to make this um, um, your um, project and your development um, for your community and nothing uh, will be done without your input. So with that said, uh, I'll bring on um, Chairman Brookings who would then, um, if, unless I'm out of order, will introduce our mayor. Hey, thanks, David. I appreciate you, Patrick and Commissioner. It is good to be here. Uh, I'm excited about the possibilities for too long developments on the south side have been one-offs, just one here, one there. We haven't been able to get the synergy uh, effect of uh, massive concentrated developments that have sparked the redevelopment of entire communities. And so with this project or with these series of projects in the southwest, we do have that opportunity to do that to make our communities great. And uh, I, I wanna thank the mayor for a vision with respect to doing this. Um, I, I tell people, and whether it is David Moore or Rod Sawyer or Anthony Beal or any of the aldermen that surround me, just because a development is happening in the 17th Ward does not mean that it will not have a synergistic effect for things to come in the 21st Ward or the entire region. And when the de uh, developers and multinational corporations are looking to do stuff in the city of Chicago, they are not looking, about, uh, looking at ward boundaries, they are looking at areas. While we know 79th Street might divide the 17th and the 21st Ward, they don't know that. They're looking at rooftops. What are the building, uh, what are the businesses are in those communities to determine if they want to put their investment there. And so with that said, as more investment goes on the south side and particularly in my neighbors surrounding uh, me is better for my community. And with that, uh, she is a giant in her own right while she is small in stature and she carries a mighty big stick. I would like to introduce uh, our mayor, the illustrious Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And Thank as you, you can see, I'm in Thank the garage because I'm in the garage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Howard, and, and thank you, uh, David, and thank you not only for uh, inviting me to, uh, I think, this important conversation, 
but thank you for your fierce advocacy every day for your wards, for your community, for the South Side. So folks, let me begin by saying, uh, I appreciate this opportunity uh, to be here um, and talking to um, Alderman Moore in particular uh, about um, this potential investment um, and wanted to make sure that you heard directly from me why I think this is important. So first, let me, let me peel back and say this. Um, we have the opportunity now with the vaccine um, and uh, with the way in which we have overall, and I say we meaning individuals in this city, not just city government, have managed um, and taken care of our business through the pandemic. We now have the opportunity, and I think are poised to have the kind of robust, inclusive uh, recovery that we so desperately need. And part of that's gotta be making sure that we continue to make good on the things that we committed to. I heard from many people, some of you uh, who are on uh, this call tonight, how the South side and the West side had not seen the kind of dedication, commitment and resources from the mayor for decades. And so I determined upon coming into office that I was going to write that historic wrong. And my team set forth um, to figure out what was the best way for us to do this. What would be the signature economic development and other plans that we could bring to the South Side to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk, to show you in real tangible ways that we are committed to making sure that we make good on the promise, not just a campaign promise, but the promise that lies in a community like Auburn Gresham to really untap the potential, the human potential, the business potential, the community organization of potential. And you do that by speaking your values and by living your truths every day. And so with the help of my team, led by uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Samir Mayakar for Neighborhood and Economic Development. And then we were um, fortunate to steal Commissioner Cox from Detroit. And he's built this incredible team focused on rejuvenating commercial corridors on the South and the West side. And for us, this isn't just about bringing retail and bricks and mortar. It's about working with you to co-curate a new future for your community to provide the kind of assets and opportunity that many of you have wanted for so long, but what's been missing is a partner in City Hall that can unite with the aldermen, with community members to get something done. And that is fundamentally the crux of Invest Southwest. And I wanna be clear about one thing. This is not one thing and done. We use this word, fancy word, catalytic. And what do we mean by that? We mean that we make strategic investments based upon conversations with people in the neighborhood to make sure that we not only uh, reflect your lived experience and what your needs are, but we make catalytic investments that will then have a ripple effect and bring other investments. So this is not one and done. This is the first of what I believe will be many key investments that we'll be making strategically throughout the South Side um, and in Auburn Gresham. And just to underscore that point, at the height of the pandemic, when we realized that Black folks in the city were dying at seven times the rate of any other demographic, we followed the data. We developed a hyper-local strategy through our racial equity rapid response team. And one of the first communities that we were in is Auburn Gresham. And we work with community leaders. You know, coming into it, we may have had some preconceived notions about what the community needed, but I tell this story often. What we heard from you is that you were worried about food insecurity. And then sure enough, we went back and looked at the data and the 311 calls that were coming from your community had a high level of people saying, where can I get access to food? And we'll talk about that in a moment. But that changed our strategy in those early days to make sure that we were meeting that community need. In addition to that, when 
um, Carlos and others won the Pritzker Prize uh, for the Healthy Lifestyle Hub, there was a, a gap in financing. So we dug in in partnership and put together $9 million in funding assistance through CARES Act, TIF, and new market tax credits to make sure that that healthy lifestyle hub could become a reality. And then building on that, as Alderman Moore said, we um, then came back to this community with an RFP and a team led by Tory Barrett um, were the bidders. And I think came up with a really interesting and solid plan. Now I know that some of that conversation has evolved, but again, here's our commitment. Our plan is to invest in another 11 million over four years in the streetscape program that will support the work that Tory and his team are putting together, um, again, from a community-led process. And I know that there have been some mixed reactions um, to the RP, um, and that's part of the reason that I'm here. But let me be clear, our commitment to this community, Arbor and Gresham, is solid, not only today, but tomorrow and into the future. We will be here with you to support you on initiatives that I know are important to you. And I wanted you to hear that directly from me. We must unite together. We must come together to build strong, healthy, community, vibrant communities. We must draw and attract private capital to realize the dreams of Auburn Gresham and other communities across the South Side and the West Side. That is fundamentally, fundamentally what we're about in Invest Southwest. And I will tell you, even in the pandemic year, we were able to push $70 million out the door in investments in city dollars. And we got a return on that investment in a pandemic year of $300 million in private and philanthropic investment. So ladies and gentlemen, we haven't been idle, we haven't rested, and we didn't let a pandemic throw us off our track. We are focused, committed, and dedicated to building strong, vibrant communities throughout the South and the West Side. And with that, I'm happy to turn it over to our great visionary commissioner, Maurice Cox. Commissioner Cox, take it away. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, just thank you for your willingness to shine a light on the South and West Side um, and allow us to explore what equitable development looks like that will allow the South and West Side to grow and grow in a way that's inclusive. So I'm, I'm proud every day of the work that we are doing uh, on your behalf for uh, the residents of Chicago. And so just thank you for your passion and your vision uh, to allow us to do this work. Um, I am going to share my screen. Uh, it's always that, always that awkward moment. <laughs> Will it work? <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, can my screen be seen? Uh, I'm going to do full yeah. screen. Okay. Um, and uh, also would just like to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, the aldermen who have been uh, strong, some of our strongest partners on this journey. Uh, and I just appreciate um, um, you coming back again and again and again and sharing uh, what is this extraordinary uh, effort uh, that we, um, we are doing together. So thank you for your partnership. Um, I thought that because there are so many folks uh, who may uh, not uh, uh, have participated in the past that I would take a moment to just um, give a little bit of an overview, uh, highlighting some of the things that the mayor um, focused on in terms of how strategic and how different this uh, strategy is. Um, as you all know, um, we identified 10 uh, neighborhoods on the south and west side 
um, that had a mixture of assets, both physical assets and human resources uh, that we felt uh, were ready for this type of coordinated investment. Uh, and one of those first communities out the gate uh, that was identified was Auburn Gresham. And uh, I think most of you who, who live there know about the amazing uh, assets that the community has, a very stable residential population, um, access uh, to transit. Um, the community itself has taken the time to do a, a quality of life plan. So in many ways, they've already set the plan. Uh, and so uh, it is all with the intent of spurring uh, economic development. Uh, and it comes from uh, an observation. And I think we've all observed this. Um, on the left-hand side, you see streets in Hyde Park, in Fulton Market, they're, they're vibrant. The storefronts are filled, the sidewalks are, are wide. Uh, there's, these are the hearts of those communities. And then you look at the inequity of investment that we have historically seen on streets like 79th Street and Hulstead. Uh, and we knew that this is the place where we have to start, uh, the place where people uh, expect to meet and greet, shop and work uh, and live. Uh, and so what um, the mayor directed us to do uh, is try a different strategy. She asked every department in the city for the first time to take the resources and align them so that we have this catalytic impact. And it wasn't that there hasn't been public investment uh, in uh, the South and West Side. It's simply that that public investment was not use to catalyze private investment. So this is what we're trying to do. Can we marshal those resources, uh, 500 million across multiple departments and 250 million additional in the planning uh, and development department across 10 neighborhood geographies? And so what does that look like for Auburn Gresham? Um, so this slide is really important because what you're seeing is the total investment that has come to Auburn Gresham since we started this journey. $30 million uh, have been targeted across agencies from our, our, our DKs, our cultural arts um, department to the Department of Housing, to our business uh, service department, to CDOT, uh, and then the Department of Planning and our Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, $30 million uh, has already begun to flow to Auburn Gresham. And that is on top of the $45 million that has come from the state and federal government to support projects like the, the Healthy Hub and the, the Metra Station. And we organized uh, our goals around things we saw in the quality of life plan. So how do we lift up and amplify the local assets that are already there, uh, like the beautiful building on 79th Street? Or focus, focus, focus the, 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 the public's uh, resources to um, the local priorities. So having an upgrade to the Metra station, an important local priority that people have been working on for years, driving, uh, driving the investment in a way that builds local wealth and the um, anaerobic digester is a $32 million investment that lives that. And then really to integrate um, strategies for public safety that build that public realm. So eyes on the streets and CDOT's investment uh, to reimagine 79th Street um, as a place uh, that has pedestrian activity. And as I said, the good thing about Auburn Gresham and part of the reason why we started here is because the community had already come together uh, back in 2005 to come up with a community vision. So our job was really just to mine that document uh, and look for things that could reinforce 
um, the vision that we saw emerging. And you can see in strategy three, the idea of preserving existing buildings, developing new housing to accommodate all levels of income and special needs was a, a, a foundation uh, principle in the quality of life plan. Uh, and then, as many of you know, we started uh, where when we could gather in the hundreds, uh, and there were 400 people that came out to the kickoff meeting uh, in 2019. Uh, since that time, uh, we have all had to pivot to um, working virtually. Uh, and so we stood up these virtual round tables and we are happy to say that over 586 uh, people have participated in uh, these round tables over the course of just one year. Uh, and so we have not stopped engaging people deeply to help set the vision for what is to happen on 79th Street. And uh, many of you may remember, we, we went, even went to the point of asking residents, where should we start? What, what are the buildings uh, that you love? Uh, and in Auburn Gresham, so many people pointed us to a building that is under the ownership of the Greater Auburn Gresham CDC uh, at uh, 839 West 79th Street. They said, let's start there. And so the city, as you know, owns uh, land uh, across the street. And so we said, okay, let's imagine um, what might be. And uh, as I was preparing to talk to you tonight, I actually went back and tried to find images of 79th Street and Halstead and what it used to be. Uh, and what is amazing about this image, if you look closely, you'll see the shoe store, you'll see the dentist, you'll see a department store, you'll see residential over, um, over the shops. Uh, this is what uh, Auburn Gresham used to be. Uh, and the area you see highlighted in red, that is the lone um, remaining building from the 1930s at this corner of the four, uh, 79 and Halstead. Uh, so I believe uh, that we can do this again. And in fact, we started with this vision um, with residents asking us, what would it be like if we had wide, broad sidewalks, um, pedestrian oriented lighting, a tree lined canopy, a place where you could have uh, dine outdoors, uh, um, the locally owned shops, uh, residents living above the shop that keep eyes on the street. And so this was the vision that was created together uh, to solicit a developer team to see how they might interpret this vision. Uh, and I will tell you that the response across the city has been extraordinary. What you are looking at are just a sample of the 26 proposals um, that came in across the Invest Southwest uh, neighborhoods that have already been RFP'd. Um, all of them with a very careful attention to the quality of life on the street, to providing um, mixed use buildings, retail on the ground floor, housing above, trying to re bring back that um, beloved Main Street uh, that so many of us can remember. Uh, so we were really pleased. Now you, um, should understand that this is happening um, all over the South and West Side if and where we are being incredibly intentional. Uh, so at the corner of 63rd um, and Cottage in Woodlawn, there is no less than seven buildings that are under construction. The idea is to cluster them together so that they work in concert with each other and they support each other. Uh, and they are um, showing that if you're intentional um, with public investment, that you can leverage it multiple times over. There will be 
uh, just above $300 million invested uh, at 63rd and Cottage. So you see everything from um, housing with retail on the ground floor, Friends Health, uh, which is bringing uh, health care to Woodlawn, um, affordable housing, a park station, and then a significant reinvestment in the uh, Cottage Grove station renovation. So this is just one example of how this cluster development is playing out um, on the south side. Uh, but also on the other end of 79th Street and Exchange in Alderman uh, Mitchell's ward, um, this RFP is currently a vision uh, that is out for developer interest. And as you can see here, it's a multi-building strategy at the 100% corner of 79th and Exchange, 50, 56 units of mixed income residential, 20,000 square feet of commercial, 20,000 square feet of community um, uses. And this is all happening um, around uh, a metro station uh, at uh, 79th in exchange. So this was the community vision. This is what we put out to see how developers would interpret this vision. Uh, and so the, the hope is that we will get to critical mass and make one truly wonderful hub for each of these communities. And so the question and really what we're here to talk about tonight and what we're here to listen to you um, respond to is how, how does the Invest Southwest strategy that we see playing out across the West side and South side, how does it work for Auburn Gresham? And so this is a timeline of what uh, has happened over the course uh, since, uh, since 2019. Um, we have released the RFP for Auburn Gresham uh, we did not receive multiple responses. Uh, we received one response. And fortunately, it's an extraordinary uh, team that responded. We went through the process of evaluating uh, the RFP. We had a meet the developer session where um, they were able to talk about their vision for the site and um, the developer was selected. And all throughout this process, we met every month with those stakeholders who would follow um, and help us shape the vision that you saw. And this is what, um, what we put out for Auburn, uh, for Auburn Gresham. On the city owned lot across from the Healthy Hub was a building, uh, five stories, uh, retail on the ground floor, um, residential above, so people have eyes on the street, uh, and we worked this together with residents so that developers would know that if they approximate this vision, that they would be um, interpreting something that the community desires. And so this was the community vision that we put out. And here uh, is the extraordinary team uh, that responded. Um, it's the Auburn Gresham Development Team uh, led by Evergreen Real Estate Group and, and Imagine Group um, with the architects, um, Ross Barney Architects and um, Nia Architects uh, and the general contractor, um, again, GMA Construction. And so uh, how, how did a team that looks like this team <laughs> that has deep experience working on the South Side um, end up winning the commission. Well, we wrote a very clear language in the RFP that all the teams, if they desire to work in our community, should reflect the demographics of the community that they seek to develop it within. And so they formed uh, an amazing joint venture with decades of professional experience uh, that they are hoping uh, to be, to uh, bring to the service uh, of this revitalization of Auburn, uh, Auburn Gresham. And so just to have a little bit of a sense of the site, um, what you're seeing is the sites in pink are publicly owned. 
the blue is uh, the healthy hub at uh, 839 um, 79th. Uh, the, uh, the yellow, all of the yellow is privately owned. And in fact, at the corner of Hulstead and 79th, there are two buildings that are vacant uh, that have the, the CVS uh, and the bank. Uh, and so our hope was by surrounding those private parcels with a strategic public in, uh, vision that we, we will see those properties either re-inhabited or redeveloped. And all of this is a stone's throw from the new uh, Metra station. And so um, the intention of creating a moment on 79th Street that genuinely could be a hub of activity is the goal. Um, and this was uh, what the RFP asked for. You see the existing site on the left and you see the RFP vision uh, on the right. Uh, and in the uh, workshops, uh, residents specifically said, we want housing that attracts young families, uh, recent graduates, younger singles, uh, and recently married couples. So they were interested in mixed income um, housing options for families who would want to live uh, in this kind of vibrant environment. We also said um, it can be about 50 units of a mixed income, about 8,000 square feet of ground floor retail and, we, and community space and parking on site. So this is what the RFP asked for. And the, what did the development team deliver? Well, they delivered a vision very, very close uh, to the community's vision, uh, wide ample sidewalks, a place with, where street life and cafe life could happen um, transparent, uh, pedestrian-oriented uh, retail, um, and and in, we we modeled 50 units. They proposed 62 units, and, and this is a very important piece because the median income uh, in Auburn Gresham is about thirty-one thousand six hundred ninety-four dollars. The median income of Chicago is twice that amount. And so when they were trying to figure out how can we create um, housing options that would be accessible to people who live in Auburn Gresham, um, you are seeing how that is done. They put together a capital stack that allows them um, to um, make these apartments affordable for folks in Auburn Gresham. And that means you know, for a household of one, uh, they will need an earning of approximately $44,000 a month, I'm sorry, a year. Uh, and for a family of, uh, of uh, four, they will need a household income of 50,000 uh, a year. And you can see the unit mix. But this was, this was their vision based on what we shared with them. They haven't talked to the community yet. They haven't had a sit down and really tried to fine tune this. They responded with the kind of professional and creative um, response that we were extremely uh, pleased with. And I know that they are anxious uh, to work uh, with residents as we refine how this vision should um, ultimately be realized. Uh, the other thing they thought uh, to do, which was wonderful, was to assemble um, uh, anchor entrepreneurs who would occupy uh, the retail uh, ground floor space. Uh, the sports shed um, is one of the uh, anchored tenants that, um, that uh, provides sports athletic equipment and uniforms um, for uh, young people and adults. Uh, is one of the tenants, a community-oriented uh, function. And then really important to them um, was to have a fine dining option, a sit-down restaurant uh, right there on 79th Street. And so Marianne Marsh, who is the owner of uh, uh, restaurants downtown, Persona and uh, M Lounge, 
uh, is the other anchor tenant that the Imagine Group and Evergreen Group are bringing to the site. Um, and so uh, it's pretty clear, I hope, um, the journey that we've laid out. Um, we firmly believe that if we build these rooftops, uh, the neighborhood amenities will follow. Uh, and so with that, I am going to uh, turn it back over to uh, Gabriela uh, and Patrick, and we're all here um, very interested in uh, hearing what you have to say. Uh, and just thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, so first, we're going to go to some of the questions that were submitted uh, in advance of today's conversation. Um, one we have from uh, an Elaine Wilson, and I think this would be uh, good for the DOH to answer is, is the low income housing tax credit subsidizing the acquisition, construction and rehabilitation of this uh, project? Hi, everyone. Um, and I'll answer part of it and I'll turn it over to my colleague, but perhaps if it's okay, if I can take some time just to explain low income housing tax credit what that program means, um, and then Kara can speak more about the project. Um, it, it won't be too long, so hopefully people don't mind. Um, my name is Cindy Soto, and I'm Managing Deputy Commissioner at the Department of Housing. Um, and also joining me is my colleague, Kara Breams, who's Project Manager at, in our Multifamily de uh, Development Office. Um, and as I mentioned, I just want to share background on the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, which is a portion of what uh, would be applied to a project like the one that we're discussing uh, about now. Uh, LIHTC, or uh, Low Income Housing Tax Credit, is the largest source of new affordable housing funding in the United States. So this isn't unique to the city, this isn't unique to the state, it is something that is applied across the country. The program is not designed to provide housing subsidies. The LIHTC Light program is designed to provide tax incentives written into the internal revenue code that pushes developers to create affordable housing. So it's really a way for us to appeal to the developer, uh, developer community to be able to seek out these funds so that we can provide more affordable housing across the city. And when we're one of uh, the lucky ones to be able to do this across Chicago, um, it is not only to this specific region, but it's across the entire city in which projects can be presented to the Department of Housing. One example of the value that LIHTC brings to, the, to community residents and businesses is from a report published in 2017. In that national report from Novogradic, the researchers, researchers analyzed multiple studies and found that LIHTC properties has an overwhelming positive impact or were neutral for neighborhood property values. One of the studies determined housing within uh, one mile or 1.1 mile from the project increased the value by 6.5% after a development was placed in service. And five additional studies found modest impacts to the property value. In terms of what LIHTC means for Chicago, the likely source of funds for development of the kind of project that we are discussing here today is low-income housing tax credits. And low-income housing tax credits require earned income generally at 60% of the area median income. That's about 56,000 for a family of four. In fact, uh, low-income housing tax credits, credits are often criticized that the income served are too high, but that is the level set by the federal government. So I just wanted to provide some additional context as to what the program actually means and the fact that it is a national resource and one that is, um, is the largest resource that the federal government can provide for affordable housing development and rehab. And Carol, I'll turn it over to you so you can speak to uh, some of the specifics of the project, even though we haven't quite seen the full application come our way. Thanks, Cindy. Can I just jump in here before, uh, uh, before uh, the next person answers? There's a lot of questions uh, that folks have, and I want to make sure we're covering as many as possible. So I would just say keep the answers crisp so we can move on and cover other questions. I, I think Cindy actually covered most of what, what we needed to say, just to reiterate that these are low income housing tax credit units are working units for working families. So $56,000 for a year for a household of four, um, those, are, those are 
families that have jobs, they have to be able to afford the rents, um, which range from 900 to roughly four, 1400 for a four bedroom unit um, with, at the city. So these are working family units. Great, thank you so much. Um, we have a, a question from um, uh, so the Auburn Gresham group. Um, they ask, what is the status of this project? Um, just overall, you know, where are we at as of this moment uh, in terms of the progression? Um, I'm happy to answer that. Um, I think and, I may... and Mr. Cox, before uh, Commissioner Cox, before you answer that, um, and, and just answering in general, but I'm concerned when we talk about the Auburn Gresham group. Um, I have, I'm concerned when we talk about the Auburn Gresham group. And so you can have answer that question, but what I've heard and what I'm hearing my residents say, we wanna hear from the residents. We don't know who the Auburn Gresham group is. And so I don't want somebody to feel like they're speaking um, for Auburn Gresham when we don't know who that group is. And so you can, it, it's a good question we we'll answer it, but just for clarification, we don't know who the Arvin Gresham group is. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Alderman. I was going to say that the um, winning um, development team has been selected. It is the uh, Evergreen Imagine Development Group. Um, and this was after the process that I described. It's in those connections, right? To look. The, um, the project has not gone through its entitlement process, meaning the development team has to get their financing. Uh, that's one piece. They have to, the, the land has to be sold to them. So it has to go through the city council uh, approval, um, but they are uh, ready and they are able. Uh, and clearly um, they are anxious to work with residents to shape the development in a way uh, that meets everyone's needs. And, and in summary, let me put that in layman's terms. Thank you so much, Commissioner. In other words, what he just said, can nothing move forward without the input from the residents? And somebody posed in this um, chat, will the um, development team be willing to work and listen to the residents? That answer is absolutely yes. Yes, that's actually a great segue into um, the next question I have from Nikia. Um, is the department able to go back to the drawing board to get community stakeholders input? Um, and I think Patrick can talk about what's gonna be happening next with um, our community engagement. Yes, uh, great question by Nikia. Thank you for your, um, your interest in, in joining us and moving forward. And like the Alderman said, like the commissioner said, um, we are going to begin initiating a, a process where we are going to be more inclusive and have more voices to the table to amplify your concerns and remarks and actually help us get to where we need to go together. Um, that process begins June 24th. But if you're interested in joining us for uh, what we would call a revisioning process, please leave your contact information in the chat box where we can collect your emails and your phone numbers so that we can follow up with you um, within the next couple of weeks. But yes, we are going to work together collaboratively with the community much better this time around because we need to go together to get to where we need to go. Thank you. And uh, Patrick, I would just add, yes, that, I would just add that the uh, principal architect, uh, Carol Ross Barney, is on the call. Um, they are nationally acclaimed uh, architects. They are the designers of the Metra uh, station, uh, and they work. How they work is they work with communities. And so this process has been, you know, they competed, they won, but they haven't actually had a chance to work with the community. So I know uh, that Carol and her team are very anxious to begin that process. And it begins immediately after this round table. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, another question we had from Michael Holmes. Um, this project has 62 units, roughly 150 people, depending on the time of day, um, but currently has uh, 32 available parking spots. Uh, how are we going to address uh, parking uh, for this community? I don't, uh, is that question, is that directed to Yes, I think what, we, what we'd like to talk about is how this is a, a transit oriented development and how we're trying to um, move right. towards that, yeah. 
Yes, uh, and so what, what we have, and part of the reason why Auburn Gresham was chosen because of its amazing access to transit. Uh, with the new investment at the Metro station, there will be people who will um, use that to commute. Uh, so that lessens the need to have 62 you know, uh, parking spaces on the site. It doesn't uh, completely, uh, there will still have to be an accommodation uh, for parking on site so that it doesn't stress uh, the area, uh, but um, we are um, aspiring to make this as transit oriented as possible. Thank you. Um, Chantel uh, Lumpkins asked, um, with regards to the round table, I would like to know more about the proposal and whether you would have space available for small businesses to rent out. I wonder if we can invite um, uh, David Block, who uh, represents um, Evergreen, to speak to the question of small business um, anchoring for the site. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening, everybody. Um, and some of you saw in the chat that Tori Barrett, uh, who is our partner on this project, is actually getting on a plane right now. His partner, Fred Spencer, is here. Uh, with us. So uh, Fred, wave wave uh, to everybody so they can see you. But Hello, yeah, everyone. just very, very briefly, um, we are looking to optimize the mixture of retail tenants uh, for this development. And so as the commissioner showed in his presentation, we have uh, two tenants identified now, the sports shed and the restaurant owners who uh, run the M Lounge. Um, but that is not the end of the list of retailers, and we are certainly open to conversations with the community about who else should be um, asked if they're interested, uh, who else we should reach out to. And the whole idea here is to create opportunities for local businesses to uh, grow their businesses as part of this development. So yes, we are very open to that. Thank you. Um, we had a question from Coretta Pruitt. Um, she said, how can this development be implemented to be a space for veterans, seniors, and persons with disability, as well as being a stable investment um, for the community? Uh, David, and in terms of uh, the way you will market and uh, et cetera, you might want to address that. Yeah, so every uh, development requires what's called a, an affirmative fair housing marketing plan. Um, and uh, I think everybody understands if we're looking to develop this as, um, as a multifamily rental building, we're subject to the fair housing laws of the US and the city of Chicago's uh, fair housing uh, uh, rental ordinances as well. So we develop a, a plan for marketing the project that gets reviewed by the Chicago Department of Housing. And in some cases, uh, there are others who review that. But the, the idea there is to start local and cast a broad net so that we are not, uh, so that we're creating affirmative opportunities for um, folks who might not other, otherwise consider an opportunity to rent an apartment in this building. So that's the, the process that we have to follow. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then there was a question just to clarify the number of units in the building because there were two different um, edits to the proposal that happened. Dave, you want me to take this one? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, I think the, the initial uh, proposal was 52 um, units. Uh, our submission included 62. However, um, we have not a finalized plan yet, as we um, discussed already, and as DPD has discussed earlier, our plan is to work with the community and come up with a strategy that best fits um, the community wishes. So that plan is not final yet. Great. Patrick, I think you had a question. I'm just trying to, or that you were. Uh... Yeah, I know that uh, we had a uh comment or question from Cynthia Love, and then we have Elaine Wilson who has had her hand up. So let's go to Cynthia Love first, and then we'll follow up with Ms. Wilson. Cynthia, you can unmute yourself. Maybe. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Um, 
I'm Cynthia Love. I am the um, corridor manager with um, uh, Chatham Business Association. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm working um, basically with the businesses um, along the corridor to um, do the infill. And I'm anxious to work with the residents to be able to find out what you're looking for um, so that we can have a thriving community. I am a resident of the Ms. Love, can I just interrupt for a second? You're, well you got a bit of a delay. Um, Maybe you can turn your video off so we can hear uh, the audio. As well as a realtor. Um, and like I said, I am the corridor manager. Um, so I want to work with anyone who is interested um, to revitalize our community. Yes, ma'am. You're good now. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes, please continue. Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, so, okay. so um, I just wanted to um, introduce myself as the corridor manager working with um, uh, Chatham Business Association. And um, I am, um, I have the task of working with the community so that we can get the businesses into uh, 79th Street so that um, it can be what we want it to be. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with the residents um, to get input. Um, there's a lot of space, um, there's a lot of vacancies. So, you know, if you have ideas or you have something um, that you wanna run, run by me or assist with, I'll be happy to, um, work with you. Uh, like um, Patrick said, we're going to have other um, events, things that are going to happen in the community. Um, and I am an Auburn Gresham resident. Um, and so I can put my information in the chat box and feel free to uh, contact me. Thank you. And uh, I think, thank you, uh, Cynthia, for um, uh, your, your work. Um, I, I, I did not mention uh, that Invest Southwest is not just an investment in bricks and mortar, but it's actually an investment in existing um, uh, organizations in, um, in uh, Auburn Gresham. And so I, I'd like to just give a shout out to Cynthia and Melinda Kelly, uh, who uh, together are, are the city's designated corridor managers to um, manage the business attraction uh, that we need. In addition, um, the Greater Auburn Gresham CDC is working on behalf of the city to, um, in partnership with our small business centers, so that we are shifting those business services onto 79th Street. And then, lastly, I think it would I would be remiss if I didn't mention our investment in the uh, artistic class. Um, there is a artist in residency commitment that the mayor has made. And the first artist in residence for Auburn Gresham is Dorian uh, Sylvian. And so it is both um, getting development to happen, but also in investing in the capacity of Auburn Gresham residents to really shape this and be a part uh, of, uh, of this journey. So I just wanna thank, thank all of you for stepping forward and putting together fantastic proposals uh, that have landed you this this honor to represent uh, Auburn Gresham. I, I just want to be conscious of everyone's time since uh, we're a little past seven o'clock here. Um, so I, I wanted to circle back, Patrick, and can we just remind everyone of the schedule that's coming up um, for the next opportunities for engagement in, in case anyone has to jump off immediately? Yeah, thank you, uh, Gabriella. The next community roundtable will be held on June 24th. Uh, but keep in mind that we also have dates for July and August that we will be announcing. Um, and finally, again, we are going to immediately follow up with all of the folks who dropped their name in the chat box. We have your emails and contact information to um, begin the process of 
uh, determining a way to move forward together by working in better collaboration with the community and residents and business owners and stakeholders. So we will be reaching out to you very shortly uh, after this meeting and we will be scheduling a follow-up meeting to this meeting shortly. Um, and you're right, we're at our time almost in the, oh, the mayor has a comment, Mayor Lightfoot. Uh, thank you, and, and thanks everyone for uh, what I think has been a, a great conversation. Hopefully the information that was shared with you tonight um, has, uh, for those of you who are not new to the process and it's reinforced um, our commitment and those of you who are new, provided you with um, helpful information um, as this process um, moves forward. And I encourage everyone uh, to be a part of the conversation. I, I do wanna make, um, a couple of last comments, if I may. There's been a lot of uh, information shared uh, in the chat and the Q&A uh, about a grocery store. You know, as I said at the outset of my comments, this is not the one and only investment that we will be making in opera aggression. We are obviously aware of the um, concerns of the community around a grocery store. Um, it's an issue across the south and the west side where there are way too many food deserts. And I can assure you that we are working diligently uh, to meet those needs, but one doesn't preclude the other. Um, as I said, this investment that we're talking about right now is one of what I'm confident will be many uh, that we are making in this neighborhood and other neighborhoods across uh, the South side. Uh, the other thing that I would say um, is this, um, there's a question about what is, quote unquote, affordable need. And I think there's some misinformation that I want to just clear up a lot and clear tonight. And I see our great housing commissioner, uh, Marissa Navarro, who's on, and she may want to jump in and perhaps clean up something that I'm about to say. Um, folks, if you look at the slide that Commissioner Cox showed and the prices of that were on those units, that's not Section 8 housing. A affordable has many meanings depending upon the community. Um, and so I think that's really important is look at the actual information. And we're making, we wanna make housing accessible to people of a variety of income levels, but this is not a CHA uh, public housing or voucher uh, program. This is making um, transit oriented development uh, affordable for people who are uh, have jobs, working hard, uh, but need some extra support to be able to live in a great community like Auburn Gresham. And then the final thing I'll say is this. We may not all agree on every issue, and sometimes we're not going to agree, but it's certainly my hope and expectation that people are going to come to these conversations with a listening ear, an open heart, and good faith. And I will tell you, I've been a little concerned by some of the things that I've been seeing in the chat and the Q&A. And I hope that what this means is that people will listen, ask tough questions, take this, take the developer and the team um, through uh, a rigorous due diligence process, but do so in a spirit of good faith. Because that is the only way that we're going to be able to move forward together. Snarky comments, uninformed comments, really aren't helpful, folks. We're here because we are committed to this community. And that doesn't mean doing things for you. That means doing things with you, by listening, by engaging, by being on the ground. And I think, you know, Commissioner uh, Cox put up 500, almost 600 people over the course of time pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, and we will continue to be present in this community to make sure that we are doing everything we can to build the kind of community in partnership with you that you want. It's, a, it's an interesting historical study in contrast between what this community looked like in 1930, vibrant, retail, shopping, and what your aspirations are. We wanna make sure that your aspirations are fulfilled but we can only do that by working together and not by tearing each other down. So I hope that this is the first of many productive conversations. 
And I look forward uh, to continuing to make sure that this administration is your partner in that work. Alderman Moore, I don't know if there's, uh, you wanna have the closing coda, but I, again, thank you so much for your leadership, for bringing this group together and for being a fierce advocate for your community um, in uh, downtown and city hall. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the only thing I would add, because you've, you've said everything and everything um, begins with um, partnership. I, I will say this, um, we have um, great partners that you've, um, we've invested so much money and um, Greater Auburn Gresham Development Corporation. Um, people know that um, without that vote in city council um, and without you helping put that money up, nothing can move. And we got some great leadership at GAGDC. But I think what we, we missed, and, 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 and respectfully to some of the people who I saw in the chat said the community wasn't involved. And that's, as the uh, mayor said, even before I came aboard um, as alderman, those quality of life plan meetings. Um, and that's what they get, and, and listening to the community in those quality of life plan meetings where many people on this call were in, but also recognizing from my last meeting that I had with my community that some people um, missed out or were not included in that. And so that's, I, I, we will take on that responsibility to say, well, we should have made sure more people with voices were included in those quality of life plans meetings. We'll make sure that that goes, uh, continue to go on. And so the fact that some of those voices were not heard, um, you know what, we, we apologize if, if, if that's the case, but going forward, everybody's voice will be heard before anything is finally final and signed off on. So I committed that to you when I called the meeting at the church and I'm here with the mayor that we're collectively committing that to you all now. So use this opportunity to make it what you want so that we can continue, not just this one site as the mayor said, but all of these vacant lot sites um, that the city owns, so that we can get synergy and um, grow our community. Thank you much, Mayor. Thank you. And I just wanted to give uh, Commissioner Navarra an uh, opportunity to speak before we closed out here. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. And apologies, I had to join late. I, I had a prior commitment uh, from six to seven, but I'm glad I got to jump on um, and, uh, and see all of you and hear the ending of your comments. I know that my colleague Cindy Soto explained a bit about the affordability levels um, and really, you know, that we're talking about uh, a level that's you know fifty five thousand dollars for a family of four. Um, we do know. I'll just say briefly. You know, in areas surrounding stations like we have here, um, we are looking for density that is more than single family homes. But we certainly want to talk about further out from the station. What does single family home ownership look like? What does it look like for us to support long time homeowners in the homes they've been in? to allow them to be able to age in place and stay in their homes. Those are all conversations that we wanna have um, as part of a holistic housing plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we greatly appreciate everyone's time this evening. Um, I think this was a fantastic uh, conversation. And please, um, we wanna keep this going. So if you have questions or additional comments, you can email dpd at cityofchicago.org. Um, and that will go to uh, myself and the communications team. And we'll be filtering um, all of those comments and conversations um, to this group. So um, thank you again all very much um, for this opportunity. And just, in case, and just in case they did not hear, um, Patrick, and I don't know if this is what the commission is about to say, there will be ongoing um, conversations and meetings with all of you all here and anybody at the, that wasn't here so we can get to what you all want so we can um, continue to move this project forward. Commissioner. And Sorry. yeah, I thank you, Alderman. I, I, I just wanted to underscore how important it is whenever it is um, you have time to dedicate to this, uh, we welcome it. Uh, so if you're, if, if, Come, if you're coming out of the pandemic mode and you have now time to give, uh, we, would, we would encourage you not only to attend the, uh, the round tables, we had 135 people on this call. If each one reached another one, we would have 260, 70 um, people. 
and we will get the word out. That's so I do feel that engagement comes with some responsibility to talk to your neighbor, um, to and share the information. We're going to make the PowerPoint presentation you saw tonight available. So you can forward it to folks who weren't able to be here. This, um, this webinar is being recorded. So you could forward a link to someone who wasn't able to make it. Let's spread the word because Auburn Gresham has momentum. It has momentum and we wanna communicate to other investors that this is a community that has amazing assets and it has residents who are ready uh, to see this transformative catalytic development happen. Let's get this first one done. Because uh, I'm looking at that 100% corner. I'm looking at that closed CBS. I'm looking at that closed bank. And I want to see development happen on it. The only way that will happen is if we signal to the private sector that Auburn Gresham is ready. Uh, and this project, we are blessed to have a team that I believe can pull it off. But we need, we need all of you to be actively engaged in the process. The alderman lives by this engagement. The mayors in our administration lives by deep engagement. So we're ready. Uh, and just thank you for your attention, your time, your thoughts. And let's, come, let's continue uh, this amazing momentum that we have now. Thank you. And um, again, if you have questions, uh, email dpd at cityofchicago.org and we will follow up. Um, hope you all have a great evening. Thank you. And we want to thank the mayor again for joining us this evening. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.